What's up guys, in this video we're gonna look at the V1 Cut and I'm gonna do my best to, well, fly and talk my way through it at the same time. A couple points of interest for you as we get rolling down the runway here. Number one, I'm gonna parallel the center line. That's the number one thing I can share with you is paralleling of the center line prior to rotation to ensure that we quote unquote remain inside the goal post. There's a briefing video I talk all about that. Second thing, once we get airborne, I wanna keep airspeed on my side. Airspeed on my side equals effective uh, rudder control. So if I have an effective rudder, control of the yaw axis more specifically, then I'm going to uh, be able to have, do a good job of maintaining wings level throughout uh, the, the uh, scenario here that we're gonna do, which is the V1 cut. And really this is true, by the way, for any single engine operation, keep airspeed on your side. How do I keep airspeed on my side? One of the things that I'm really gonna be looking for here is um, the flight director bars, not to go above the flight director bars. Certainly I wanna stay in the flight director bars. And if for some reason you're having a difficult time do that, doing that, even below the flight director bars is better than above, but never above, and we wanna keep a very close eye on airspeed. If I see the airspeed decaying, I'm gonna to need to lower the nose so that we don't have that airspeed decay, which really translates into not having loss of rudder effectiveness. So, let's do this. N1, toga, set takeoff thrust. Thrust set. Eddie not. Check. V1. There's the engine failure. failure. Paralleling the center line, smooth rotation off. Now I'm looking immediately inside to the pitch attitude. What I want to see is wings level. Nice. Now I'm watching my airspeed. Any speed decay that I see, I'm going to lower the nose. Gear up. What's the right here? So now I'm scanning airspeed. Now you see the airspeed's decaying here, which is normal because it's going down to the V2 feet. speed. Heading select. And I'm scanning airspeed and heading because I want to stay inside of the Airman Certification Standard tolerances on my heading there. So I can see that right here, I'm certainly within those tolerances. Tower uh, training, declare an emergency, one engine failure. Bug up. Now, as Javier bugs up, we're going to notice that the flight director bar is going to begin to command a nose down pitch attitude. And essentially what that's going to do is it's going to begin accelerating us forward. And of course, as we accelerate forward, ultimately what's going to happen is my rudder is going to get more effective. And as it gets more effective, I'm going to need less of it. So I'm just going to be prepared to remove some of this rudder pressure as the airspeed accelerates, and also not only remove the rudder pressure, but also remove the rudder trim. Now I did use some trim back here. There's some different techniques that we can talk about, but primarily all the technique I would like to share with you is use as much as is needed to feel good and comfortable on your foot. Flaps one. Flap one set. Flaps up. Flaps up, set. Nice, so we got the flaps up. As soon as I hear flaps up, no lights, I'm just gonna call for level change, max continuous thrust. Set. And that is pretty much the end of the stick and rudder portion of the V1 cut. Of course, if you haven't already done so, take a look at the command A. Uh, V1 cut whiteboard briefing that comes before this video to get a better idea as to some more tips and tricks and techniques but hopefully now this video has provided some insight for you as to how it's going to go in the simulator in terms of seeing the whiteboard briefing in action we'll see you in another video